This is the first in a series of sermons about the gospel in Disney. Now, I, I want to say to you right away, it's not the gospel of Disney. That would be an entirely different thing. But this is looking at the gospel kind of in everyday things. So there are a lot of places where we can see God and the story of God in the lives of uh, in the stories, in the actions of others, if we'll just take a moment and look. Um, I debated between Harry Potter and Disney, and I went with Disney. Who knows, maybe one day I'll pull out Harry Potter. But uh, you can find the gospel in a lot of different places. And so today we're going to kick off the series. We're going to look at uh, the Lion King uh, for... Um, looking for the gospel. Uh, I kind of put in the weekly word that there are a lot of different directions this sermon could go in, and so we're going to uh, take a look at things, and then we're going to get going here. Uh, uh, the Lion King is kind of unique in the Disney lineup. Um, uh, Cody, we, we watched The Lion King last night. Uh, I, I did research last night, and Cody asked me an interesting question. He said, are each of these, are, are, is this hand-drawn? And I didn't know the answer, so I looked it up. Um, I think The Lion King was uh, put out in 94. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. But um, it is the last fully hand-drawn animated movie that Disney put out. After that, there, there was computer animation, animation, animation. Um, and it is, it was the highest opening Disney movie at the time. It has been since replaced, but it is still the highest grossing hand animated Disney movie. So The Lion King kind of holds a special place. It's kind of that transition from uh, old school to new school, from being completely hand done hand-drawn, uh, hand-painted, to then computer-assisted or computer-animated. Um, so it kind of holds a special place in the Disney lineup. Um, so this idea of the Lion King, uh, I, I have to go through my uh, notes here um, to kind of remind me of what order I want to go in. Uh, there are a lot of places that you can find the gospel in The Lion King. I'm going to use a few of them. Uh, I want to start with kind of that big opening scene. Now, some of you may have seen the, um, the live show. You may have seen the musical The Lion King, and I think they open with the same scene. It's, it's the scene where the new prince is born, he is uh, celebrated, um, we have this, oh, I don't know, clergy type person uh, that comes along and anoints him king. There's that whole scene where the baboon comes and he uh, anoints him and then displays him to the gathered community. Maybe you all recognize even just a little bit there. Just a few weeks ago, we had a couple of baptisms here. Baptism is that anointing, that laying on of hands, and presenting to the congregation. That whole idea, and I have no idea what Disney writers were thinking about when they wrote this, but I'm telling you what, they couldn't have done a much better job. Uh, it was this whole idea of this celebration of life, that the whole community of faith showed up, this newborn child was anointed and blessed and named and then presented to the congregation. 
And there, there's just not much more that you could do to say that it was really close to how it is that we celebrate, especially the baptism of infants here. Uh, for me personally, maybe that's where it comes from. Maybe I'm just, co- no, I'm not copying Disney. Disney is copying us. We've been around a lot longer. And see, that's the place where we need to be careful as we go through this series. We are not trying to make Disney into some religious thing. It's not that. It's the fact that we're just looking at it. So the Lion King, uh, when it first came out, um, uh, 94, I didn't have kids, but I had kids, and we had the VCR tape of it. And my oldest son loved animals. For those of you who don't know, a VCR tape, for those of you watching online, for those of you who may not know, a VCR tape is old school technology. It's actual tape that runs through a machine that plays on a screen. Perhaps you've seen it in your parents' or your grandparents' home. I still have some VCR tapes in my house. Um, but I don't, I don't have anything to play them on, but I have them. <laughs> I'm not a hoarder. I am not a hoarder. So, uh, we wore our first Lion King tape out watching the Lion King. Uh, David loved animals, and it was right down his alley. And uh, we would sing the song. We all sang the song. We would listen to the soundtrack in the car on trips. Uh, We, oh, it was terrible. Uh, We listened to the pig song. I don't know if you remember the scene. Are you aching for some bacon? We sang that, we listened to that in the car one trip over and over and over again until we learned all the words to that song. And we would just break out on that vacation. We would break out into the bacon song almost every morning because we wanted breakfast. And we wanted, we were aching for some bacon. Um, Those are the kinds of things. So when I say I've watched this a few times, I've probably watched this in the background as noise probably over a hundred times. So when I'm talking about these scenes and I'm thinking about these scenes, there's a lot that goes into it. So we have this, idea that the king is a lion. We've heard that before. Uh, The lion is the king of the jungle, and here we have this scene where the current king uh, anoints his son to be future king. So uh, we have Mufasa, who is the king, and we have Simba, who is his son, and Simba is anointed as the prince. And there's this whole idea of kingship. We heard today about the Lion of Judah. The Lion of Judah goes back to uh, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And this whole idea that the kingship would come from the line of Judah. Um, It was a father. Jacob spoke it into into existence as he blessed his son Judah and said to his son Judah that his line would be the line of kings forever in Israel until such time that everything that had been promised would be fulfilled. And that is one of the reasons why we have in a couple of the Gospels this whole listing of names. Because it is important to connect Jesus to the line of Judah. In fact, 
Jesus is often depicted as the Lion of Judah. And this whole idea that the king and the line of succession and that whole idea of anointing the king. We see that Jesus is uh, properly anointed and circumcised at eight days according to custom. And then we see with John the Baptist that Jesus is baptized and the Holy Spirit descends upon him. And it's at that moment in time when his ministry truly begins. So in the Lion King, we see that Simba is anointed and he is the prince. And he is kind of the stereotypical prince. He, uh, he's a, a little ru ru rude. He's a little entitled. He thinks he's better than everybody else. And he reminds people that he's the prince. Now, he doesn't do it, I think, in a mean way. It's just his life. That's who he is. But then, of course, uh, every good Disney movie needs a bad guy. And we find the brother of Mufasa, whose name is, of course, Scar. You've got to say it that way. You can't just say Scar. You have to say Scar. Disney wants you to be a little bit afraid when you hear that name, this whole idea that good, Mufasa, and evil, Scar, can look the same. I want you to think about that very carefully. Good and evil can look the same. And if you don't think it's something that's biblical... Let's go for a ride. So we have heard that the king is the lion of Judah, and we saw in our Revelation text that Jesus is called the lion. But there's also a text, and if you believe in the devil and if you believe in evil, there's also a text that says evil waits like a crouching lion ready to pounce and to devour and to destroy. Even in the biblical text, that lion is not kept exclusively for the king. Evil is portrayed as the lion prowling around, waiting to pounce on us. So we see in the movie that Scar wants to be the king. He is tired of being second best. And to be the king, he has to re remove Mufasa from control. Uh, to do that, he has to kill him. And he wants to kill his son Simba. And there's this big scene in the gorge where the wildebeest herd stampedes through and there's this big, dramatic scene. And the father saves his son. And we think that he's going to get out of the gorge, and he meets his brother at the top. And his brother does what has been occurring in our world for millennia that started with Cain and Abel in the Bible, one brother hating another brother enough to kill him. And so it plays out in that scene that Scar gets rid of Mufasa, and Scar sends his henchmen, the hyenas, to take care of Simba. But the henchmen, the hench hyenas, I don't know, whatever you want to call them, don't get the job done. And we see that Simba escapes into the desert, and Simba is rescued. Rescued by his old friends, Timon and Pumbaa. And Timon and Pumbaa teach him about this whole idea. I talked about it with the kids up here. Hakuna Matata. No worries. And so he grows into adulthood, 
with this attitude of no worries. How many of you, me included, have had those times in our lives when we were young and we didn't have a care in the world? I remember those times, both fondly and cringingly. There were some things that I did in those times that were very inappropriate. But man, they certainly were freeing, weren't they? No worries, no responsibilities. I remember it. And then I got my first apartment, and I had to pay rent every month, and then I had to pay utilities every month. And a kuna matata went out the window. I mean, no worries is great. When you're a child, you should have no worries. That's why I told them, have a kuna matata. A kid shouldn't have any worries in the world. But there becomes a point at which responsibility steps in. We see that when uh, Simba is reacquainted with Nala, uh, a, a friend from Old Pride Rock, and she declares to him, You're the king. She reminds him of his responsibility. As people, we are reminded of our responsibility as we continue to seek to be children of God. There's moments in our lives when responsibilities come upon us. And it's important that we, as Christians, take those responsibilities seriously. That we set aside that worry-free attitude, that laissez-faire idea, and we take up the mantle of what it is that we, as Christians, are called to be. We are called to be followers of Christ. So Simba, who has accepted his call, there's this, this whole scene where he uh, meets the bamboon again. Uh, what's his name? Rafiki? Uh, Rafiki reminds him of who he is, and there's this powerful scene where Simba is away from everybody else, and he's having these thoughts, and he has this conversation with his father, Mufasa. We know it's not a real conversation. It's probably a conversation that is occurring in Simba's head. But he remembers the words of his father to remember who he is. Remember, he says. And as Christians, we have to remember who we are. We are children of God, called by God to do good in our world, to be agents of change, to share the good news, to share the gospel. We talked about that last week, going out and sharing. Oh, I forgot to check in. Did you do your homework? Is our online viewing going to be higher than it was last week because you invited people to come to church this week? Oh, man. If you didn't and you're feeling a little bit of guilt right now, maybe next week invite people to come. Or maybe invite people to watch this week as we talk about The Lion King. You can do that on Facebook. You can do that on YouTube. Invite somebody to church. In our world today, it doesn't have to be physically inviting somebody to come into the building. You can tell a friend, hey, watch this. I know you like Disney stuff. Or maybe you have somebody who really likes the Lion King, and they can find fact mistakes in my sermon. Tell them to email me. I, I take criticism well. And I'm not going to make any jokes. So this whole idea of remembering who we are and whose we are and what our responsibility is. But it is, of course, a Disney movie. And Disney movies all, ha well, 
Disney animated movies all have to end the same way. And how do they end? How do they end? Happily ever after. That is correct. All Disney movies end happily ever after. Simba returns to the Pride Land. There's a huge battle scene. Simba is reinstated as king. The Pride Land that had been wrecked and destroyed by poor management and famine is instantly reawakened with a fresh cleansing rain. And everybody lives happily ever after. This is the most important message. For Disney, the most important message is happily ever after. And for God, the most important message is happily ever after. Disney stole it right out of the Bible. And I think Walt Disney knew that people were looking for a happy ending. In our world, we uh, are bombarded with things that go bad. That whole idea of watching the news, um, they have uh, uh, 24 minutes of bad news. One minute of weather, two minutes of sports, and 30 seconds of a feel-good story. That's the news, in a nutshell. we got to have one feel-good story. It's usually about a cat or a dog or a squirrel, right? Makes you smile, makes you happy. But the reality is, most of it is bad news. And we have a tendency to get stuck in the bad news of our world and of our life. There are a lot of bad things that happen in our lives. Some of them are self-inflicted. We call that sin. Some of them are inflicted upon us by the sins of others. So there are bad things that happen in our world because somebody else was being, well, not wise. And so bad things happen to us, and bad things happen because of the choices that we make. And that sin is in our lives. But I have good news. And the good news is that Jesus Christ, the Lion of Judah, came here to forgive us our sins. We celebrate communion every month, and that is a reminder for us that we are indeed forgiven by Jesus Christ. Uh, it's also something that we talk about when we do baptisms. We talk about forgiveness of sins, that sins are forgiven. And this whole idea that people are held back by the bad things that they've done. Occasionally, I will come to people and I will say to them, hey, could you do this or lead this at church? And they go, oh, no, pastor, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. If you knew anything about me, you would know that I shouldn't do that. I've done bad things in my life. And the reality is, all of us are in that boat. We are, we are on that ship together. It's not a boat, it's a ship. I think it's one of those big, huge cruise lines that's got multiple floors, and it is packed full of people. I know it is. We have all done bad things. We have all fallen short. That whole idea of forgiveness sets us free to be about the work of the church. You are exactly who is needed. Simba had thought he had sinned. He had thought he had caused the death of his father. Yet, he was the Savior that was needed. He was the person that was needed to fulfill 
that whole idea of leadership and kingship and goodness, that whole idea of happily ever after. As Christians, we live in a constant world of happily ever after. That no matter what happens in this place at this time, the promise is that we are forgiven and that everlasting life with God is ours. We are guaranteed happily ever after. Disney tries to pump it into us through all of their different shows, that whole idea that happily ever after involves, oh, I don't know, a kiss, a marriage, uh, overcoming evil. But the reality is we know the truth. Happily ever after is a promise from God. God's promise to us is that we will have happily ever after. Heaven is our happily ever after, and it is available to everyone. So as we talk about the Lion King, I told you there were a lot of places that you can go. Good versus evil, and how sometimes good and evil look exactly the same. That whole idea of being anointed to be a child of God, a prince or princess of God. You are anointed to be God's children. You are the prince and princess of God. And there are great things planned for your life. That whole idea of redemption, coming back out of the darkness, we see it in the stories of the Bible, the, the prodigal son returning from his life of Hakuna Matata, which wasn't so worry-free after all, and taking responsibility and being forgiven. That whole idea of happily ever after is yours for eternity if you choose to follow God. I hope in the weeks to come that you will join me as we look at three other Disney movies. Uh, we're going to look at Aladdin, we're going to look at Pocahontas, and we're going to look at, oh man, just jumped out of my head. Hunchback in Notre Dame. I, I got a hunchback block. I'll get rid of it, trust me, it'll be fine. But I want to encourage you to continue to invite people to enjoy this series, especially if you know they like that video. Do your research, watch those four movies, and be ready to experience the gospel in, not the gospel of, the gospel in Disney. Because God is everywhere. That's the promise. Will you pray with me? God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for this day and we give thanks that you indeed are the king and that we are freed to live happily ever after in heaven with you, your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
go forth from this place and share the good news. Amen.